Today's teenagers are looking for hope. Suicide has become one of the leading causes of death among teens worldwide. We are called by God to eradicate hopelessness, and since January of 1993, we have been on the road ministering words of hope to teenagers in high schools across America and in nations around the world. Our message is simple. God loves you, He's got a plan for your life, and in Him, you matter. Hi everyone, this is Dean and Lori Sykes. Welcome to You Matter Television, where you know what? We believe every single life really does matter. Our, our ministry began on January 1st, 1993, and all those years ago, if you had told me that Lori and I were gonna be sitting here talking with you about marriage and life and teenagers, I would have just sat there and just kind of shook my head like, I, I just don't see that. <laughs> but you know what? God did. And when we began, um, this ministry. It was just me. So when I say we, I'm always referring to the Lord and I. We began before Lori and I were ever even knew that either, either of us existed. And during those first years of this ministry, I, I was just investing so much time, literally every year we would minister to at least 100,000 teenagers on the road. And during those first two or three, four years, as I was traveling and ministering, I lived a very public life in a very lonely way. And my biggest desire was to get married. My biggest desire was to, to meet the person that God had created specifically for me. And, you know, I had tried it my way. I'd, I'd go, you know, God, where's my wife? God, where's my wife? God, where's my And I'm sure God was going, oh, would you please change your confession? <clears throat> and one day he got my attention because I called a friend of mine named David Young, who lived out in the Tulsa, Oklahoma area of the United States. And I said, David, I had just come in off the road. I was pooped. I was, I was, I was just tired. I go, David, where's my wife? And he said, Dean, would you do me a favor? I said, sure. He said, would you shut your mouth? <laughs> and I was like, what are you talking about? He said, every single time that you say, where's my wife? It's a seed of doubt. Where's my job? When are my kids gonna come back in? When am I gonna get married? Those are all seeds. He said, change your confession of faith and begin to thank God for your wife before you ever see her. Well, I tried it my way and it had not worked. And so I said, all right, I'll try that. Then the Lord checked me and said, you know, my word says the just shall live by faith, not try by faith. And I said, yes, sir. And I made a list of what I really believe God was putting on my heart to believe him for in my wife. And I began to stop asking and I began to instead start thanking. And if you were with us on last week's broadcast, you saw that the thanking produced Lori. You know, that's really interesting that you would say that because a couple weeks ago, uh, the night after Valentine's Day, I had some girls over, some dear friends of mine, two of which are single mothers who were believing for their husbands. And after that, this, this was for them, kind of a Galentine's night, just to celebrate them. And after that, God put it, really put it strongly in my heart to write them a petition. Mm. And sometimes it takes me a long time to write a petition because there's so much of the word you just want to have, you know, there for a, a petition. But this particular time, it, it didn't take me but a day to get it done. And I, when I sent it to them, and in the, in, in the content of the, the petition, it was just what you were talking about where, and in, in the previous um, segment too, when we were talking, um, when we were, when you were believing God for me. Yeah. And um, because it's the husband's wife, or it's the husband's responsibility to find the wife. Yep. And I told my friends in that, that it was our responsibility to thank him for it as if it had already happened. And so that just kind of, yeah. you know, yeah. struck a chord in me that, you know. Um, well, if you, in saying that, I mean, let's just, let's jump over to, to uh, First John and I'll show you what Lori's talking about. It's 1 John chapter 5, five, verses 14 and 15. This is what the word says. Now, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, watch this, whatever we ask, we know that we have, and here's the word, the petitions that we've asked of him. God gave me that scripture, um, oh, a long time ago. I was in South Australia ministering. And we had some things going on in our life that we needed to see change, but they weren't changing on their own. Mm -hmm. 
it, the only thing that God is honor bound to respond to is his word coming out of your mouth in faith. So in, in Australia that day, I sat down and wrote a petition based on this. Well, if you look at these two scriptures, that if we ask anything according to his will, comma, he hears us. I'm convinced that if we don't even pray, if we don't pray according to his will, our prayers don't hit the top of this studio. It's when we pray according to his will. What's, what's his will? Well, his word. His word and his will are congruent. And so in, in standing in faith on what the word says, we can, we can petition God. And I know that when I wrote the petition for you, it, it was, there, were, there were spiritual attributes, but there were also physical attributes. I mean, it's like when, when we believed God for our, for our first airplane, there, everything that we believed God for in that airplane, based on the petition, we got it. Everything that, that I believed God for in my wife is sitting right here. Now think about that. What do, you, what do you know that God wants you to have in your life that you don't yet have it? What's holding you back? Well, I can tell you one of, one of the things that's holding him back, which oh. is one thing that we talked about that night when I was with my friends. Um, because I've had to learn this over the years and it's taken me a long time to recognize this. But in order to really believe the word that God gives us access to, we have to accept the love that he's given us, accept the acceptance mm. um, of him first before we can ever really truly believe God for what he already wants to do for us. That's good. And it goes back to accepting his acceptance. And really, I mean, I think a lot of us, I mean, I know you and I grew up in a Christian home. We heard God loves you. I, we, we said God loves me over and over and over, but it's not until we grasp that and we own it and it becomes a part of who we are yeah. that we are able to truly see him as father. Father God, who you're a father, you love your children and, and you would do anything and everything that you could for them and gladly. Um, so I just think it's that crossing over into not just, yes, God accepts me. Yes, God loves me, but accepting that in, and, and it becoming a part of who we are. So that, that's, that's such an important point to, to grab hold of because we are accepted in the beloved, meaning he accepts us. He meets us where we are. We talked about this last week. He meets us where we are and he leads us on this journey of where he desires us to be. Maybe you're on that journey right now and you just, maybe you feel lonely. Maybe you're wondering, you know what it is, what's all this? Call the number on your screen. There's a number there. Someone who cares will answer that phone. They'll pray with you. You, you, can, you, can, write, you can write us. You, you can email us. You, you can connect with us. And we, we want to connect with you because we, we don't believe this is just a one-way deal where we're just talking to you. We truly believe that we can hear from you as well. Maybe, maybe something that's said on the broadcast today, you go, hey, I had an idea, Dean. Or, Lori, I was thinking about this. Contact us and tell us what the idea was. Share with us what's on your heart. So Lori and I, we go on our first date. We talked about this last week. Now, now we, we are about 40 days into our relationship. And I'm like, well, I, she's the one for me. <laughs> and so I go to a jewelry store where I, where I had done some business and a dear friend of mine owns it. And I said, you know, I'm, I've met the girl I'm going to marry. I need a ring. And so um, I got the ring. And I remember I went over to your parents' home. You obviously weren't there that day. I went to, I went to talk with your mom and dad. And I said, uh, I'd like to have your blessing, talking to your dad, to marry your daughter. And instantly he said yes, because they knew. And, and your mom said, you know, we, we've been praying for our girls' husbands for a long, long time, and you're here. I said, well, you can stop praying, because I'm here, and this is mine, and we're, we're together, and that's how life's gonna be. You started early working on my mom and I dad, didn't you? I did, I did, <laughs> yes. I was the son they never had. Anyway, um, I remember I asked Lori to marry me. She said yes. So we, we, we met in August. We were engaged by September and married the following May. And go back to our second date when I told you that I wasn't interested in getting <laughs> yeah. involved in a relationship. I will never forget that night. I was driving her home, driving down um, a place called Tunnel Boulevard. I don't know right where we were sitting. And she looked over and she said, I just need you to know I'm not interested <laughs> in a real... And I'm like, well... Okay. You may not think you're interested, but you are, because God will put this on my heart, not put it on your heart. Mm -hmm. And we got married May 4th, 1996. 
And on our honeymoon, we got pregnant with Will. So we met in 95, married in 96, had Will 97, Ellie 98, Meg 99. We highly recommend the married life. Maybe but, not quite that fast. <laughs> well, it We was, have grown up a little bit and learned a lot a lot over well, the years. You know, one of the things we've learned, though, and, and, and we, we can laugh about it now because, I mean, those first five years of marriage and having three kids in diapers and trying to figure your life out and running a ministry and bouncing all over the world for tr- tr- speaking and ministry, Lori at home, you know, taking care of, I mean, it, it was just, it's a blur. But I'll tell you one thing, one verse that, that the Lord really prompted me to share with you on, the, on today's broadcast, and it, it kind of fits right where we are, so let me just jump to it. It's in um, 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 11 and 12. Then he said, talking to Elijah, God says, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore into the mountains and broke the rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. Watch this. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Verse 13. So it was when Elijah heard. You see, you may be going through things in your life right now, and it may feel like an earthquake. It may feel like a fire. It may be windy. It may, But God's always in the still, small voice. And I believe right now that he's speaking to you. There are things, and listen, the, the, the anointing in the studio just shifted. There are things in your life that you need to just hang on to. Hang on to this word. Don't let go. Know that his still, small voice is still easily accessible. You can access God at any moment. You know why? Because God hasn't moved. God is right there with you. He doesn't walk away from you. He's promised to never leave you or forsake you. When, when, when you are where you are right now, wherever that is, you may be in a hospital bed. You may be watching this in a prison. You may, you may be at home fixing dinner or cooking, whatever. You may, you may be watching on your iPad or your telephone, however and wherever. The still, small voice of God will show up in your life. I, I know that people look at us and they go, you, you, you've only known each other 40 days. How, how, how can you be so sure? Well, I can, right there's why. The still, small voice. I knew it was God. Lori knew it was God. And, and as we have come through now all these years of being married and our kids are grown, you know, what would you say to the mom out there today who's watching at home? Maybe she's raised a family with her husband and she's, she's trying to figure out what the next season of life looks like. You, you minister to a lot of young moms, I know, because you've been there. What do you say to the mom today? Well, I would say, um, you know, I can tell you that for years, because of some things that we went through personally, um, there was a time that Dean and I struggled in our marriage, and I think any marriage, um, healthy or not, and we certainly, there were seasons in our lives where we weren't, but I can say that we are most definitely now. Um, There was a time where I dreaded this moment. I dreaded this time um, that it was just us. Um, um, But because of what we've come through and, and because of our willingness not to give up, and not to stop short. I think oftentimes we stop short of God um, being able to move in our lives because we get in a hurry or we want things to happen a certain way. And many times I think in my life, because of my stubbornness and our resistance to, to wait and be patient. But now I can say um, that as a mom who have three children that are in college now, you know, my, my last year, year and a half or two, have been seeking the Lord about my next. And how I would encourage you moms out there is to just continue seeking Him and continue to spend time with Him and listen, like Dean said, that small, still voice sometimes we miss when we get in a hurry to want to, to get to the next instead of staying right here because it's here that God wants to speak to us. And it's really here between what we've asked the Lord, requested from the Lord or seeking the Lord to, to that time where our, our prayers answered or we discover what it is. That's where our faith is active. That's where our faith is strong. And that's where we can be the most intimate with our Father, trusting that He has our best interest at heart. He wants the best for us. And 
that whatever he has for us to do next as mothers, that he will lead and guide us into, into that truth. That's good. That makes sense. Yep, because you know what, if you, if you were listening right then and you really heard, you, you heard the heartbeat of God because it's in, it's in the here and now. And Hebrews, Hebrews tells us that, that now faith is. Not tomorrow faith will be or yesterday faith was, even though that's accurate, but the word is clear in Hebrew. Now faith is. Faith is now. And whatever, it, I mean, you may have the greatest marriage and the most wonderful family, and, or you may be sitting there single and trying to figure out what's, what's next for your life. I, I go back, I keep, I've heard it probably three times in this broadcast, God meets you where you are. I'll tell you what happens. It, it's when, when, when you hear the, the, stall, the, the small, still voice of God, and you let God direct your steps. And last week we talked about out of, out of Proverbs 16 how, how man plans, but God directs. I mean, when you're listening for God, when, when you're literally in, in tune to where it is that God's wanting you to, to go, where he's wanting you to be, then he takes you on this journey that leads you over to, I'm just going to read it to you, Ephesians 3.20. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. You know, the, the word says in Proverbs that there is death and life in the power of the tongue. The same power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead resides in Lori, resides in me, resides in you if you are a born again believer. So the power that we have, one of the ways we exhibit that power is by the words that we speak. If you're sitting there today going, well, I'll never get married, I'll never have kids, you won't. Well, that was harsh. No, it's real. Because the reality of, of life is you are a self-fulfilling prophecy. We, say, we, we share with teenagers every day that we are on the road how valuable your words are because God gives you the freedom to choose what you say or don't say. You have the freedom to choose and speak death or choose and speak life. It's up to you. And at the end of the day, no one can make you say what God says, but I can tell you the only way you're ever going to have what God has for you is to say what God says. The only way that Lori's sitting here today as my wife is... I had to hear God, hear the still, small voice of God. Then I had to say what God instructed me to say. And then Lori had to hear, and then she had to say. And then together now, Matthew 19, 6, what God is joined together, let not man separate. Matthew 18, 19, where two or three agree. When Lori and I come into an agreement and we speak what the word says, we then have what the word says is ours. It'll work for, for you as well as it will work for anyone else. God is not a respecter of persons. God is a respecter of a person's faith. So, what does that mean to you today? Get into this word. Stay in it. Believe God. Make you a list of what it is you're believing God for. Lori and I have right now 13 things on a list that we are believing God to accomplish this year. 13. Some are seemingly small, others are fairly large. But without a vision, people perish. We're getting ready to go to break, and when we come back, we're going to wrap up today's broadcast. But again, there's an 800 number on your screen that's there for a reason. We pay for that. Our ministry pays that, that service so that you can have someone that you can talk to right now. If you dial that number, someone who cares, someone who knows God, who knows how to pray, will answer, will pray with you. They'll give you information on how to reach our ministry. In addition to that, I want you to take a look, please, at this announcement on You Matter, My Personal Testimony of Hope. Much more of Lori's and my story is in this book. Take a look at these two announcements, and we'll be right back. In this new book, Dean Sykes invites you into his very personal journey of discovering why he matters to God. It's not because of what he does in life. It's not because of who he knows. It's not because he goes to church, and it's not even because he's in full-time ministry. Dean has learned that he matters to God for the same reason that you matter to God. We matter because he loves us so much that he gave us life. This book is Dean's personal testimony, some of the story of God's amazing grace, his love, and in the end, a true narrative about redemption and moving forward in faith. With the foreword of this book having been written by Brother Kenneth Copeland, we invite you to get your copy today, and as you do, trust Jesus to take you on your very own journey of discovering that in him, you matter. 
Order your copy of You Matter, My Personal Testimony of Hope today at youmatter.us. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are. Today we are actually in St. Louis. Behind me is the arch. They tell me this is the tallest monument in America. I just wanted to share with you one more time why we do this. Your life really does matter. This pledge card is a pledge that we ask teenagers every day to sign. Teenagers from all walks of life, from every imaginable social class, wherever you are, wherever you're watching this, I encourage you, go online, youmatter.us, and sign our pledge because this pledge is a personal choice that begins with a personal signature. The pledge simply says, I choose to live and not end my life for three reasons. God created me as an original. God created me for relationship. God created me to fulfill a purpose. Job 33, 4 says, the Spirit of God made you and the breath of the Almighty gave you life. That's where you came from, my friend. And let me share this in closing with you. When you sign this pledge, get this, where there is life, there is hope. Your life really does matter. God bless you. Okay, that's You Matter, my personal testimony of hope. We really encourage you to pray about getting this. It, it, it's a tool that has helped a lot of people because testimonies are relatable. And I guarantee you today, there are many of you out there who, who can relate to our story. And, you know, one, one at some point in the future, we'll, we'll have an opportunity that the Lord will give us, I believe, to really share more and more of, of more in depth of our story than I know you'll relate to. So also the pledge card, uh, boy, that's the centerpiece of what we do with teenagers. It, it is the centerpiece of reaching in. Every high school we go into, I, I, as, as you just saw, I, I, I stand on a stage and I just watch these teenagers grab this pledge and I watch them sign their name, taking personal responsibility. You know what? Whether you're a teenager today, a college student, or even an adult, you can go on our website, youmatter.us, and you can sign the pledge right there online, and you can become part of a growing community of literally tens of thousands of people who've signed the pledge. Lori, what's on your heart if we get ready to close? Well, I think when we were talking earlier, the thing that kept it almost distracted me a little bit because I kept hearing the word in we were using, referencing in. I think the, the most important part about all of this is that we stay in him and our heavenly father because he desires for us to have a relationship with him before he desires for us to have a relationship with anybody else. And I believe that marriage is a reflection of our relationship with the heavenly father. He truly, is, he is love. Therefore he's, he is, he wants us to be in that place of intimacy with him, not just because we're seeking him for something that we desire, although, we have access to his word and, and he gives us the desires of our heart when we delight ourselves in him. But that's the, that's, if you could ask me one of the greatest gifts I've ever received and that is, of course, salvation and, and marriage and my family. But the, the, but the most special gift that I have ever received is the, the being in him part, yeah. that, that place of intimacy, that place of just knowing that he is real and that he can do, like Dean mentioned earlier, and I believe it wholeheartedly, exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Um, because I think sometimes we think that we know what's best for us or we know what we want yeah. out of life. And God does take that into consideration, but we just have to remember that he is God and in him is everything that we could ever need or want. So, and that, I, think that's so, I think that's so important because, you know, a lot of times people are, you know, I want to be in ministry. Uh, I, I want to be on television. Uh, I want to do this. I want to, I, and, and, and it's, those are great to have desires, but I've had to learn from a, from a very personal journey that less of me, more of him is what works. And I've had to learn, you know, a lot of times, well, I'll just, I'll just tell you that for, for many, many years, it, my priorities were uh, probably ministry, God, and then family versus God, family, and ministry. Mm. And that, that played out in our home. That, that caused challenges because, you know, you can get so engulfed in doing that you miss the whole process of being. Mm. And for me, that was a real journey where... 
the, it had the priorities had to change. We we had to get back to a place or get to a place where, you know what? It's God first. It's the Word, and then it's Lori. And then it's our kids, and then it's ministry, because. Before God ever built a ministry, go to Genesis, he first built a family. And so maybe today you're sitting there and you've, your priorities may not be completely in order that God wants them. You know what's so great about this moment? Just like that, it can change. God will meet you right where you are. And I have seen him. When I've gone to the Lord, when I've really missed it, when I've gone to the Lord and said, I repent, or if I missed something with Lori, if I, if I was short with her, if I was mean with her, if I, if I said things that weren't kind, if I go back to Lori and go, honey, I was, I, I was wrong, forgive me. She's so quick to forgive me. But if I let that sit out there for a little while, ooh. <laughs> trust me, you want to go ahead and get it over with. Get, go, just humble yourself quickly. Why? Because that's how God does things. He tells us, be quick to repent. Be quick. Listen, I, I, I knew that today's broadcast would go by so, so fast. If, if today you have not made Jesus Lord of your life, I'm going to invite you to make what I call the choice of a lifetime. It's a very simple prayer. You can pray like this. Father, I believe that Jesus died for me, that he went to hell so I wouldn't have to. I believe that today, Jesus, you're seated at the right hand of the Father talking to him about me. I invite you to come live in my life. Be Lord of my life. Be my Savior. I'm yours. You're mine. It's settled in Jesus' name. If you just prayed that prayer, heaven just went into a ballistic party. Mm -hmm. Call the number on your screen. We want to celebrate with you today. Hey, I just prayed that prayer with Dean and Lori, and I'm a, I'm a believer. It's a big deal. Get into a local church that teaches the word. Get into the, a full gospel word of faith church that just preaches what the word says. Stay tuned into the network. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Faith coming into your life. If you're interested in becoming a partner with our ministry, there's never any pressure, but there's always an opportunity. Lori and I pray for you. We pray for new partners every day that God will touch you wherever you are. There's no amount too small, no amount too large. We just invite you to pray about it. If you're supposed to be part of this journey with us and helping us get into high schools, to Teen Challenge Centers, to prisons, then come along with us. Come alongside. That word in the Greek is parakletos. Come alongside as someone called to, to be in partnership with us. And if you're interested in coming into your cities, to your schools, again, the 800 number is the way to do that. Call that number. Say, hey, I, want, I would like for the You Matter campaign to come to our schools. They'll contact us. We'll then contact you and your schools. And somehow in God's master calendar, he puts it on the, on, on the dates. We do about 150 schools, chapels, assemblies every single year. I hope that you have enjoyed having my honey with, with me for the last two weeks. There'll be more of this to come. But, you know, I just really believe that today, you think back over the last two weeks of broadcasting, you saw last week and this week, it all comes down to having a relationship and trusting God in the process. Remember, where there is life, there is hope. Your life matters. Today's broadcast was made possible by friends and partners of Dean Sykes and our You Matter campaign. We hope you've been empowered by today's broadcast. You too can make a difference in a teenager's life. Thank you for your continued prayers and support as we hit the road to reach more teens across America and around the world. Remember, where there is life, there is hope. We'll see you next time on our You Matter broadcast with Dean Sykes.